Do you like keeping up with new releases like me yet? You don't actually keep up with them and you are behind on reading all the new releases that you wanted to get to? Welcome. So today is a combination of a list video and a TBR. So the way that this is going to work is my December TBR is going to be based off of the books that I get to from this specific list. I do not think on any planet I would be able to get to all of these books in one month. It would be unrealistic. However, I wanted to put together a list of the 2021 releases that I have bought and have not read yet. And specifically, this is going to focus on young adult because that's mostly the books that I've bought and haven't read. I used to, before joining booktube, I would read a book, buy a book, then read that book and add it to my collection. And now, obviously, I have accumulated a fair amount of books that I haven't read. And I love the hype. I live for the hype. Like, I want to read a book when it first comes out and either, like, before the hype or, like, while it's just getting a lot of attention. I like to stay up to date on the books that are currently being released. And so... I have noticed that I've been reading a little bit less YA and obviously I still want to keep up with the genre um, in terms of, but in terms of the books that I'm like buying and actually reading, I want to kind of like get through all of the ones from 2021 so that I can now, when 2022 comes around, which is crazy, keep on top of the new releases there and just try and stay really current with YA that I'm reading because I don't have a really big backlist of YA that I need to read if that makes sense. So it's end of November when I'm filming this, so any December books that are coming out, I haven't included them here, or late November books that I haven't bought yet. So one of those books is Our Violent Ends by Chloe Gong. I have ordered a copy because I went to her virtual signing. It hasn't arrived yet, so like you won't physically see it on this. I guess it's on the list now that I mentioned it. So when I was putting this list together, it is somewhat chronological in the release order throughout the year. I can't guarantee that it's 100% fixed, but first I want to go into the books that I want to read in December regardless of this list. The first book is going to be an arc that I was sent and I'm really, really excited about, and that is The Midnight Girls by Alicia Jacinka, and this is a sapphic witchy book, and it's these two witches that are in a magical competition to win the heart of a prince but they fall for each other instead, and it's based on Polish folklore. I mean, do I need to say more? It is coming out. Um, it wasn't coming out in the beginning of December, but because of supply chain issues, I think it was pushed to December 28th, so I just need to read it before then. But I mean, look at this gorgeous illustrated cover. Totally gonna read it. The other two books that I wanna read are some holiday rom-coms my favorite romance authors. The first of that is Window Shopping by Tessa Bailey. It's a reverse grumpy sunshine, so the woman is grumpy and the man is the sunshine. And we have these two people that meet outside of this department store, Vivin, which is on the cover. And this is an independently published one by Tessa Bailey. It just seems really short and sweet. It's like only 200 something pages, so I can't wait to read it and put me in the holiday spirit. The next book is Gifting Me to His Best Friend by Katie Robert. This is a smutty MMF Christmas novella. I think the title describes it all. A man gives his wife to his best friend for Christmas. I'm sure you can interpret the context from there. Okay, so now let's get into the list of all these 2021 new releases I bought but haven't read. And... We'll see which ones I get to in December. So first up is The Gilded Ones by Namina Forna, and this was actually sent to me by Kaylee. Love you, Kaylee. Um, this was one of her favorite reads of the year. Also, look at the back. I just like love the ombre design on this cover. It says, are we girls or are we demons? Are we going to die or are we going to survive? What happens is there's a ceremony that sees what color your blood is, and if you have gold blood, you are a gilded one, and you have to face a consequence worth worse than death but then a mysterious woman comes to her village and offers her with a choice to come and join this army full of others that are like her with gold blood and they are actually alakai which are near mortals with super rare gifts this just seems like a classic adventure novel i'm absolutely in love with this cover it is just so gorgeous 
and thank you Keely for gifting it to me. Next is Rule of Wolves by Lee Bardugo. This is the follow-up to King of Scars um, and the latest in the Grishaverse. And I say latest because you never know. I feel like we're gonna get more Grishaverse. Um, yes. This takes place after the Shadow and Bone trilogy and the Six of Crows duology. So there's a lot to get to this point um, and obviously it's to follow up to King of Scars. So in King of Scars we are following King Nikolai and some of the Grisha. Um, and we're following characters from both Shadow and Bone series and Six of Crows duology. And then something happened at the end of King of Scars that made me very um, interested to pick this up and see how it's going to work because it's a trope that I don't know how I feel about. Um, however, I have not picked this one up yet. It just, the mood hasn't struck. I really also need to watch the TV show, so I feel like reading this will get me in the mood to watch the TV show. Don't come at me for not watching the TV show yet. I... I'm not a big TV watcher, so I'm just really slow. I think it's gonna be the next TV show that I watch though. So yeah, this is really long and I'm just like, haven't read it yet because, I don't know. The next big boy that I haven't read yet, oh my goodness. The next big book that I have not read yet is Realm Breaker by Victoria Abiard. This is her new YA fantasy adventure and we are following a squad of people on a journey and she describes this as like what happens when the varsity fails and the JV league is called in. Love that description. So I will just read you the back because I feel like it describes the cast of characters very well. A squire, the survivor of a failed quest, an immortal, timeless, and unfathomable, an assassin, skilled and heartless, an old sorceress holding secrets beneath her teeth, and a pirate's daughter, the ward's last hope. The heroes are gone, but the fight to save the world has only just begun. So I just think that this is going to be great. Red Queen is one of the first series that got me back into reading YA after I finished college and so I, Victoria of Aviard holds a special place in my heart because of that and I'm really excited to see what she does with her new series. This is the first thing that she is writing after finishing up the Red Queen Quartet. Next we have The Ones We're Meant to Find by Joan He and this is like a sci-fi thriller and so what happens is C wakes up on the shore of an abandoned island and she has no idea who she was before she was marooned and all she knows is that she has a sister and it's up to C to escape the island and find her. Meanwhile, 16-year-old STEM prodigy Casey is also looking to escape from the science she once believed in and from her home. And so it's the, the journey of these two sisters in the sci-fi world to try and find one another. I I'm always really interested in these. I feel like they're very thought-provoking, kind of like post-apocalyptic new world thriller mysteries. I've heard really good things about this one, and I really want to read it. These Hollow Vows by Lexi Ryan. I have heard that this skates the new adult YA ledge, shall you say, and so I have heard it's also pretty much compared to Akotar because it's a love triangle. I just feel like this is like everything that I love, so I'm excited for it. So Brie would do anything before making a deal with the Fae. But when her sister is taken by the Unseely King, she'd do anything to get her back, including making a deal with the king himself to steal three magical relics from the rival Seely Court. All that she has to do to get access to the Seely Co Court is pose as a potential bride for Prince Ronan, and the Seely Prince who's not quite as wicked as she once thought. Unwilling to let her heart distract her, she accepts help from a band of Unseely misfits with their own secret agenda. But as Bree spends more time with their mysterious leader, Finn, she finds herself struggling to resist his seductive charm. So she is stuck between two dangerous courts. Some classic fey, seely and unseely. I feel like it's going to be a great time. Here we have The Queen Will Betray You by Sarah Henning, which is a sequel to The Princess Will Save You, and there is a third book coming out in 2022. So The Princess Will Save You follows Princess Amarande, and she is just this strong-willed, badass princess, and in order to get political leverage on her, they kidnap her childhood love, Luca, who is just a stable boy and is not really trained in any sort of combat or likes any kind of fighting and so he is now the damsel in distress and i just love the subverted tr damsel in distress trope it's amazing and uh, the world was really built up politically and i'm excited that it's getting three books now instead of two because there's a lot of the world left to explore and i really want to pick this one up and like again i just love the covers here we have bone criers dawn by katherine purdy which is the sequel to bone criers moon which made my top 10 of 2020. The bone criers are responsible for ferrying the dead and in order to join their ranks, the girls must undergo a ritual in which they lure their true love to the bridge and kill him. 
and once that happens they have full access to their powers. Elise undergoes this ritual and she tracks her true love Bastion whose father was killed by a bone crier and he is set out on revenge on these women and so they are bound together and they both want to kill each other have to kill each other but if they were interrupted in the middle of the ritual so if they kill they both die so they're in a pickle <laughs> and meanwhile we also follow sabine who is elisa's best friend and she will do anything to try and get her best friend out of the situation i just thought it was like really well done story and i really want to see what happens in the concluding novel here we have small favors by aaron a craig i read um house of salt and sorrows by aaron a craig in 2020 loved it so in this one it says enter not the forest deep beyond the bells the dark fiends keep and so this is about Ellery Dowling who lives in isolated Amity Falls which is surrounded by mountains and she dreams of bigger things earlier settlers fought off these monsters in the mountains um, but there are whispers that the creatures still exist so when some townsfolk go missing on a supply trip a heavy unease settles over the falls Strange activities begin to plague the town, and as the seasons change, it's clear something is terribly wrong. The creatures are real, and they're offering to fulfill the residents' deepest desires, however grand, for just one small favor. It seems a very chilling. I'm into it. I actually have a lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee. This is the beautiful Owl Crate um, edition, which has these silver sparkly edges. And apparently there are no men in this book. Very exciting. So Felicity Morrow is back at the Dalloway School, which is perched in the Catskill Mountains. Um, she took a break after her ex-girlfriend died. It's the exclusive dormitory room to be haunted by the spirits of the five Dalloway students, girls that some today were witches. Witchcraft is woven into Dalloway's past. The school doesn't talk about it, but the students do. In secret rooms and shadowy corners, girls convene, and before her girlfriend died, Felicity was drawn to the dark, but she's determined to leave it behind now. However, she has a new roommate, Ellis Halley, who is a prodigy novelist at 17, and she is a method writer. Ellis asks for Felicity's help to research the Dalloway Five, and they get drawn into their world after that. So I'm going to include this one on the list, even though I can't read it until I read the Carval series, which I really need to get to, and I really think I'm going to enjoy once I get to it, but Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. So this is the front, and this is the back, and this was like the pre-order incentive dust jacket, um, and this is like the standard cover. I just put the fancy one on over it. I really love this side. So in this one we follow Jax and Evangeline. So Evangeline strikes a deal with the charismatic but wicked Prince of Hearts in order to stop who she believes is her true love from marrying another. In exchange for his help, he asks for three kisses to be given time and place of his choosing. So love that. Love the vibe. I think I'm going to love it when I read it. I also have this very pretty Barnes & Noble edition. I love the rose gold. I wasn't sure how I was gonna feel about this um, when I saw it online, but like the rose gold looks really stunning in person. Best for Teen by Margaret Rogerson. I put this on my November TBR and did not get to it because Zodiac Academy has consumed my life. That's pretty much all I read in November. I digress. I really do want to get to this one soon. So we're following Artisma. So we're following Artisma, who is a nun in a convent, and they cleanse the body of the dead so that their souls can pass on. And if they do not do that, they will rise as spirits with a ravenous hunger for the living. So she'd rather deal with the dead than the living who whisper about her and her scarred hands. So when her convent is attacked by possessed soldiers, Artisma defends it by awakening an ancient spirit bound to a saint's relic. It is a revenant, a malevolent being that threatens to possess her the moment she drops her guard. So wielding its extraordinary power um, almost consumes her, but death has come to Lorelei, and only Vespertine, a priestess trained to wield a high relic, has any chance of stopping it. So with all the knowledge of the Vespertines lost to time, Artisma must turn to the last remaining expert for help, the revenant itself. I just love, love, love the concept. Love Margaret Rogerson's writing. It's just so gorgeous and beautiful. Like, Sorcery of Thorns is probably one of my favorite books of all time, so I can't wait to read this. Here I have Little Thieves by Margaret Owen. I love Margaret Owen ever since um, The Merciful Crow. I've been following along with her work. So 
So this is her new series and it is a goose girly telling and I have um, some like pre-order benefit things that I got in here. Vanja is the adopted goddaughter of Death and Fortune um, and she was Princess Gazelle's dutiful servant up until a year ago. That's when Vanja's otherworldly mothers demand a terrible price for their care and Vanja decided to steal her future back by stealing Giselle's life for herself. So the real Giselle is left a penniless nobody while Vanja uses an enchanted spring of pearls to take her place. Now Vanja leads a lonely but lucrative double life as a princess and a jewel thief, charming nobility, while emptying their coffers to fund her great escape. Then, one heist away from freedom, Vanja crosses the wrong god and is cursed to an untimely end turning into jewels stones by stone for her greed. So Vanja just has two weeks to figure out how to break her curse and make her get away. I think it's gonna be great, I'm very excited. And I got this like little comic from the publisher like as a little preview. And um, Margaret Owen is like also an illustrator and so she illustrated this herself and like, I just think it's so cool and like just the vibes that I get from this is absolutely amazing. Okay. Next, I have The Last Legacy by Adrian Young. This is a follow-up to Fable and Namesake, and now we are following the Roth family, and they control the gem trade. So a letter arrives from her uncle Henrik on Bryn Roth's 18th birthday, summoning her back to Bastion, and she's eager to prove herself. Um, so she needs to win people's trust if she wants to hold her place in this family's power structure. Um, but it doesn't take long for her to see how entangled the Roths are in the shadows. So with a forbidden romance to contend with and dangerous work ahead, the price of being accepted into the Roths may be more than Bryn can pay. So we got a hint of the Roths brutality in Namesake and I'm really interested to see this new character and in this new world I actually have read all of Adrian Young's works up to this point and I always enjoy the books that she puts out so I'm excited to read this one. Here I have Jade Fire Gold by June C.L. Tan and this is described as for fans of Avatar The Last Airbender, specifically Zutara fans, so I heard that and I was like, let me purchase. So An is a no one, found as a child. She has no memory of her past, only a dark secret, magical power that would mean her imprisonment if they were discovered. But when An's secret is accidentally exposed, she's sent to the Imperial Palace to await her fate. Then we have Alton, whose real name was once known throughout the Shi Empire, when his family was murdered and his birthright hijacked, he lost everything. Now, with a new name and vengeance on his mind, he intends to gain it all back, even if it means entangling his very soul with dark and dangerous magic from which he may never escape. When Alton encounters On and her mysterious abilities, he sees in her a path to reclaiming the throne. Their tenuous alliance is on the verge of becoming something more when the depth of An's dark powers are awakened and the two realize restoring the empire might come at a far deadlier price than they could have ever imagined. I mean, this just seems like all of the action adventure that I want, like elemental magic, this like dynamic that these two are gonna have, I know I need it in my life. Here we have Luminous by Mara Rutherford. This book is so beautiful. I read A Crown of Coral and Pearl by her and absolutely loved it. So Leora has always shone from within ever since she a star collided with her house when she was a child. That is a beautiful opening summary. <laughs> so since that day, she has spent her life indoors only venturing out on the brightest days when her magic can't be detected. For discovery can mean falling prey to the king's warlock, Darius, who uses m mage's magic to grow his own power. But when her worst nightmare comes to pass and Darius discover her, she's not the one taken. Instead, he demands that her younger sister return to the capital with him to work under his watchful eye. To make matters worse, Everin, Lyora's childhood friend and the only one who knows her secret, goes missing following Darius's visit, leaving Lyora with no one to turn to. To find Everin and save her sister, Lyora must embrace the power she has always feared. Star magic? I mean, star magic. Next we have All of Us Villains by Amanda Foody and Christine Lynn Herman, and I just went to a signing for this book, so look at this cute little sticker. It says, Annihilation is my love language. Love that. I think I might just like stick it in the book. Here we go, the signed page. So this is about a town where every generation, the families must enter in a tournament to the death and the one that wins, their family controls the supply of magic. However, this year it's very different because in a tell-all book was published about this magical tournament and now they are exposed and 
everyone knows that this tournament is going to happen. So we follow four POVs of characters that are like competing in this death tournament and we get to see like what happens and I just loved going to the signing and hearing the two authors speak about like their writing process together and about like their magic system and how they came to write this book and I'm really excited to read it now that I've heard from them. And the signing for All of Us Villains was actually the first in-person signing I went to in like two years. Next we have Gilded by Marissa Meyer which is a book that I went to a virtual signing for. So I have this book signed. There it is. And this is going to be a new duology and it's based on Rumpled Stiltskin. Marissa Meyer is most known for her Cinder series which is a fairy tale reimagining and so I'm so excited when she's doing another fairy tale reimagining. So Cyrilda is a miller's daughter and she has been cursed by the god of lies and she's developed a talent for spinning stories that are fantastical and spellbinding and entirely untrue. So when one of her tales draws the attention of the sinister Ur Earl King and his undead hunters, she finds herself swept away into a grim world where ghouls and phantoms prowl the earth and hollow-eyed ravens track her every move. The king orders Cyrilda to complete the impossible task of spinning straw into gold or be killed for telling falsehoods. In her desperation, Cyrilda unwilling summons a mysterious boy to her aid. He agrees to help her for a price. It is a Rumpelstiltskin retelling. So excited. And I mean, just look at this cover. The last book that I have to talk about today is Dreams Lie Beneath by Rebecca Ross. I mean, I've been intrigued by this cover ever since I first saw it and I have read The Queen's Rising by her and I just think she has a very beautiful lyrical writing style. I do want to like read all of her books and I just see her as an author that I can like follow her journey as she publishes more. She actually has an adult book coming in a few months um, so that's always exciting because I love following authors as they go from YA to adult back and forth. It's amazing. So every new moon magic flows from the nearby mountains and brings nightmares to life and only magicians who serve as territory wardens stand between people and their worst dreams. Clementine Madigan is ready to follow in her father's footsteps as the warden of Hareswith even though she yearns to study the wilder side of magic. Instead, she must record townspeople's nightmares so she and her father are prepared for the danger of the new moon. When her father's domain is challenged by two magicians, Clementine is drawn into a century-old conflict. She seeks revenge on one of the brothers who dueled with her father, but as she gets closer to the handsome young magician, secrets begin to rise, and Clementine, once keen on vengeance, must unite with her rival and face the realm's curse, which seems to be haunting her at every turn. Um, it's about dream magic. I love dream magic ever since reading Strange and Dreamer and this just seems like I will love it. So there you have it. There's my December TBR slash the books that I'm going to choose from to build my December TBR. So it's like I'm not going to read all of these books in one month but these are the options that I have to choose from. I kind of like structuring TBRs that way. Maybe I will do more of that in the future. Who knows? Let me know if you like this format of video because it was more experimental for me. And I just love books, love reading. Let me know if you're interested in any of these books. We can discuss in the comments all the wonderful books that came out this year. And have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.